Welcome to English Country Life and welcome to our small holding. This is Hazel and she's going to be one of the wonderful models today so I can tell you about how we use leg rings to identify our buff Orpington chickens. Welcome, my name's Fiona. We do breed buff Orpingtons here and a lot of the chickens look very similar. There's various reasons why we need to separate the chickens and recognise each of them as individuals. And today what I'm going to do is talk to you about the leg rings and how we use them. There are multiple reasons why you might want to have them, so we'll look at that first. Then I'll show you the types of leg rings that may be available. And then finally talk to you about exactly how we use them here on the small holding. So let's get started. So why might you want to use leg rings? So there are three main reasons. The first is to identify individual hens. So here we have Willow in green, we have Rowan in yellow, and we have Laurel in pink. The second reason is to identify the ages of hens. So on this other leg, you may want to put blue when they're hatched in 2020, and green if they're hatched in 2021, and so on. Your third reason is a reason that we have here and that's because we breed chickens and every single year we buy in some eggs and from those eggs we want to hatch a brand new cockle and that's to bring new genetics into the flocks. So we keep hens which are from our own breeding stock and we hatch a new breeding cockle for the following year. But we need to identify which cockles come from the bought in eggs. So this year we have two sets of bought in eggs, two clutches. One has a yellow leg band and the other has a green leg band so we can clearly identify those cockles. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of leg rings out there on the market that you can get hold of and the various pros and cons of each of them. This is probably the one which most people know and it's the spiral and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a piece of plastic in a spiral and essentially you rotate it onto the chicken's leg. Now the great advantage with these, so the big pro is that once they're on they generally stay on. It's really really difficult for your chickens to actually pull these off or accidentally lose them in your chicken pen, coop or in an area that they're roaming ranging free. Now the downside is just as it's hard for your chickens to pull these off it's also actually quite difficult for you to put them on and to take them off. They're probably the most difficult of all of the banding types I'm, I'm going to show you. Now that means that if you've got growing chickens and growing hens these probably aren't the best type because you're going to have to put multiple different sizes on and off until they reach adult size. The second most common type that you'll see out there are these rigid bands which clip together. So you place them over the chicken's leg and then just clip them shut. And the great advantage with these is they're easy to fit and they're also incredibly cheap. But if you've got growing chickens, they're not necessarily a great fit. Now you'll see a lot of people out there that will say that actually that they automatically spring open and fall off if the chicken grows to a size, or if the chicken's leg grows to a size where these no longer fit. Now that's not guaranteed, I have to say. So you can get into the circumstance where you've got a growing chicken or a growing hen who has outgrown their size and this thing is still clamped onto their leg. So you've either got to be really, really on top of it to make sure that you are removing these before they outgrow the size or you need to wait until they've reached full grown size to use these clips. That would be my recommendation. Now the final type are these flat bands and these have a great advantage and these are a great advantage for growing hens and they're basically just flat bands of plastic which are curled into shape and the advantage there is if you put these on a young chicken who's still growing as their leg grows it essentially will unfurl 
in line with the size of the chicken's legs. So if you don't quite get to them fast enough to move them up to the next size, it's not gonna cause them any great discomfort whatsoever because it will unfurl a little bit and then you can get to them and change them up to the size up. There is two disadvantages that goes with these different band types. They're probably the easiest for your chickens to remove out of the three, but the other one is they are really, really hard to get hold of. We have a great stock here because an organisation we bought them from a few years ago unfortunately um, went into administration, so they went bust, and we bought a great stock of these in different colours and different sizes, so we have enough. And I understand there are a number of other manufacturers out there now making them, but there's not that many Many. Certainly not as many make spirals or the clips, but if you've got growing hens who haven't yet reached adult size, these are a really good fit. So let's bring all that together, why you might want to use leg wings in the first place and the different types that are out there on the market and show you how we use them here on the small holding. In the first section, one of the main reasons we talked about for using leg rings is to identify individual chickens. So let's play a game of spot that chicken. Here are four photos of our buff Orpingtons. Do they show one chicken? Do they show two chickens? Do they show three chickens? In fact, there are four different chickens shown. Clockwise from top left, we have Laurel, then Hazel, Willow, and finally Cinnamon. As I spend a lot of time with them, I can tell them apart because of slight differences in comb colour and size, as well as plumage differences. But most of our visitors who come and see us have trouble identifying them. To make it easier, every single one of them has a different coloured leg ring on their right leg. Let me introduce you to Hazel. She's a core part of our breeding flock. She's a fantastic broody hen. She's fully grown, so her legs aren't going to get any bigger. And because she's staying with us, she has a spiral. Now, the reason for that is although the spirals are harder to put on, it's also the most secure. So it's never going to come off in Hazel's case. So she has a blue spiral on her leg, and hopefully that you can see that. We do use an age identifier for our older hens. Here's Cinnamon with a blue leg spiral on both legs. The left leg spiral identifies her as being hatched in 2018. And the right leg spiral identifies her as an individual, a Cinnamon from that hatch year. For our youngsters, it's a little different. We buy eggs in to hatch a new unrelated cockerel for the following breeding year, and this is one of them. On his left leg, he has a yellow band, and that identifies the clutch of eggs that he came from. On his right leg, there's a black band, and that's how we can identify him as an individual. That allows us to assess his characteristics before making a final selection for breeding. With hens from the eggs that we've brought in, we don't need to identify them as individuals. As they're related to the new breeding cockerel, they'll be sold to avoid related hens and cockerels breeding together. As you can see, this young hen only has a yellow band to identify the clutch of eggs that she came from. You may also have noticed that all of the youngsters are wearing flat band types of leg ring, and that's to ensure they've got something that has potential to grow with them as they grow. For chickens hatched from our own breeding stock, it's the opposite way around. So it's the hens we need to be able to identify as individuals. This young hen has a red band on its left leg and that identifies it as being hatched from an egg which we've bred here on the small holding. It's also got a grey band on its right leg as its individual identifier. Now some of our hens are sold, but some will keep in our core breeding flock, so it's important that each hen has an individual identifier. That allows us to assess its characteristics before deciding if she'll become part of the breeding flock or be sold on. I hope that's helped you with leg rings and you see how we use them here on the small holding very effectively. Hazel's been very patient with me, so I better let her down in a moment. 
If you have liked this content, take a second and give me a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, come and join us. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you'd like to support the channel, head on over to EnglishCountryLife.com where you'll find our branded merchandise, including these wonderful t-shirts that you can't see because Hazel's in front of it, and lots of other things. If you've got any questions for me, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.